Hello YouTube, this is Bowtied Media. Today we've got another installment of Hot Takes, where I have gone onto the interwebs, onto socials, and asked for your hot takes and your hot opinions on stuff. Uh, there was no specific category, it was just anything generally EDM related, just hot takes about anything really. There was no specific question, so without any further ado, let's get into it. Monster Cat has severely gone down in quality as of this year, and it's quite rare to find a song that I can really enjoy and want to re-listen again in the future. Kind of? Yeah? I don't know. I It's hard to explain. I, Monster Cat just feels different um, this year, and they have they have been the last, I would say, two, maybe three years. Things just, it, it feels different. It just feels... I, yeah, I, I mean, I have to agree for the most part. Um, there isn't a whole ton of stuff I've been really replaying uh, and wanting to go back to. And that's that's kind of sad. Uh, maybe I'm just outgrowing Monster Cat. Uh, I don't know. I feel like this is a general sentiment that some of you are sharing. So I don't I don't know what it is, but I, it's something it's, it's it's an intangible right now that I can't quite land my finger on. Um, maybe I need to do some deeper research, deeper thought into this and figure out the cause. A ton of harsh noise and dark ambiance music doesn't get enough credit in the electronic landscape. A fair chunk of it is really intriguing and unpredictable in a way that makes it fun to listen to, even despite the abrasive elements. Um, this will be an argument that is said forever in terms of underground music. Uh, this is more, I would say this style that you're describing is more of the underground style of EDM. Uh, and there will always be a group of people that go, the underground is, is not recognized as, as much and it needs to have, be more popular and all this kind of stuff. But then if it ever goes popular, people are going to be like, well, this is just lame popular stuff now. And so there's always this, <laughs> there's always this back and forth, like dubstep for a while. People were like, this is, this underground noise is crazy. Skrillex, who's this guy? Like, this is nuts. It needs more attention. And nowadays it's like, well, dubstep's kind of just bland and boring. So I, I get it. I get the sentiment. Also, um, I think it doesn't need to be, if you love it, then yes, great. And obviously push it onto other people if you really, really like it and say that you should listen to this. But they, it's just not a general thing easy listen to thing. And I think for the most part, people like to listen to music because it's easy to listen to. Commercial EDM or a more simple take on the genre found in more pop sounding songs isn't inherently bad like many people claim it is. If it has a catchy rhythm and or you can uh, hear that effort and heart was put into it, uh, simpler takes on the genre can be much more enjoyable to listen to as more complex underground tracks. Very topical for what we're talking about. And uh, I would agree, especially with that last sentiment, um, where simpler can be better. Uh, I know there's a, <laughs> one of the big examples for me was, um, tragically, I, I would say like never say die in some capacity. Um, they said die and disciple. There's a lot of stuff that is super like the underground, like the last kind of hot take was about that I don't enjoy as much where I would go and listen to the top 40 EDM kind of any, any other given day. I would listen to that over the more abrasive underground styles just because it's, it's easier to listen to. And so that's not a bad thing. And I agree. Um, there is definitely... Yes, I think for the most part, some of the popper stuff isn't as great because it's made to be catchy and simple to listen to, but there are a few people that get it really right. Yep, I'm not afraid to talk about this kind of stuff. Uh, the comment says, I think community should separate the art and artists. Like for example, Aerocord, uh, who did a lot of great iconic stuff on Monster Cat, but after that incident, people turned, uh, people started hating his music just because of it. Um, this is the age old question where you say, say it or saw it a lot recently. Um, Aerocord, even the Charles Manson stuff. And, uh, I can't remember the other big rapper. I can't remember who it was a little something. Uh, and even Kanye West in some capacity where it's like, can you separate the art from the artist and what is too bad of a thing to do outside of the art for people to like boycott your music in some capacity. And so, yeah, it's it's up to your own discretion. Obviously, uh, there's people that have been a lot uh, very hurt by things that other people have done to other people, and they and they feel that sentiment and they resent their music because of that, because of the hurt they've received, and that's okay. And there's people that can, I guess, separate the art from the artist, and that's, I guess, okay. Um, it just depends. I would say, don't be idolizing the person. Um, let's not be idolizing these people. Um, I think I I wouldn't say. Like, I don't know if this is a hot take to say, I wouldn't say hating their music is like a righteous thing to be doing. Um, I might get some slack for this or some flack for this, but like, I don't know. I just, 
I, I, I haven't listened to Aerochord since uh, the incident. I will be very transparent about that. Um, but uh, I haven't really been actively against it. Like if his song comes on, like I'll listen to it. But I don't know why I would find myself in that circumstance. Um, but uh, yeah, this will be a question that will be asked for forever. Um, can you separate the art from the artist? So Monster Cat releases too many EPs and LPs to point to the point where it's not special anymore because it's so expected. Especially having new artists debut with an EP is a bad idea in my opinion because the community can't give feedback on the debut before all other tracks are released. Um, I don't, I think you may be overestimating the power of the community. Uh, I do not think uh, artists are looking at the community for a debut release and saying, I need to change to whatever the community wants. Um, I think there may be minor changes in some areas, um, but I think you're giving the community too much credit uh, for what the sound of an artist is. Uh, And also, I don't think it's a bad thing that they release a ton of EPs and LPs. Um, I think the Silk EPs are too much. I think the double-sided singles, the two tracks shouldn't be called EPs. That's just a separate thing. Um, So in that sense, too many EPs. Um, But uh, I I think it's good to have lots of EPs and LPs, especially with the compilations being gone. I think you kind of need more of this variety. And um, I'm okay with the Monster Cat taking this direction, uh, more so of artist EPs and LPs than compilations. So uh, I'm okay with it in that sense. Rhythm is currently one of the worst, most uncreative genres of electronic music. Um, I mean, I kind of got to agree to some extent. Uh, I haven't found a huge love for Rhythm at this point uh, because a lot of it just sounds similar to me. Um, I'm glad that color base kind of branched off from that and is a little more or actually quite a bit different than the subgenre of the subgenre or whatever. But um, yeah, I, 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 I sort of agree with this hot take. Uh, and that's just personally, I'm not a huge rhythm enjoyer. Uh, and I just, I haven't, I've, I've listened to a lot of rhythm for not liking rhythm. And uh, I still haven't found uh, a ton to really enjoy. I'm not going to lie. We might never get another 2010 to 2012 era rise of EDM. I don't think we ever will. We never will because we've hit mainstream now. When Skrillex became a household name for the kind of dubstep or abrasive music, um, you, we can't get that rise. You can't get any bigger. Like think of pop music nowadays. So much of pop is influenced by EDM. So much of the big artists have, they're branching into now, they're categorized as electro pop now. It's not just pop, it's electro pop or dance pop. And so much of it is, EDM is ingrained into the natural music landscape um, that we won't get another rise because we've already risen. EDM's already risen uh, to its max, maybe? Porter Robinson and Maddion are the new Daft Punk. Many artists' inspirations include Daft Punk, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, but I've seen the same happen with Porter and Maddion. Um, I would agree to some extent, especially with uh, Daft Punk kind of being, not kind of, they are gone now. Uh, and Porter and Maddion are so tied together so neatly because of they released two albums uh, separately and then like at the same time together and they've gone on tour together. And so uh, I do know a lot of people though that are saying nowadays that they have their inspiration from Porter and Maddion and they got their inspiration from Daft Punk. So it's kind of a nice little uh, flow chart or waterfall of inspirations of um, at one point you were inspired by something and then people are inspired by your inspiration of that thing. So um, I sort of agree. I just don't think anyone will really be Daft Punk. It's just a different inspiration, but I, I know what you mean. I get I get it. Tristam's With Love Until We Die LP is the most overrated album in this community. Tristam in general is such an overrated artist as his only song that really passes the good mark is Questions. Every other song by him has been meh to me. Uh, What are you hearing in Questions that you're not hearing in the rest of his discography? A lot of it sounds pretty similar uh, to some extent. It's not a vastly different song than the rest of what he's done, especially on the album uh, with Love Until We Die. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously music has its subjectiveness, uh, but there is some objectivity to it of an artist is like, is good. Like obviously you can hate the best artist in the world or the best artist in the world. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but there, there is a sense where you have to be like, actually this is objectively kind of good. Um, and I would say Tristam has a lot of elements that make him objectively good. And then you can subjectively like it or dislike it, but some of it is... I would say objectively good. Conroe's songs in 2022 so far are just like McDonald's french fries. They should be really subpar and flat feeling compared to the other stuff, but you just keep coming back to them because you're so addicted to the sweet yet salty taste they have. That is possibly one of the best descriptions 
of Conroe I've ever heard. <laughs>